powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. The sex trafficking case against an alleged pimp now in the hands of a jury at the Billings Federal Courthouse. Terrence Edwards faces 10 charges related to prostitution for allegedly trafficking women and children in Montana. His co-defendant Francine Joanna Gran Granados also on trial for allegedly tampering with a victim. Q2's Asia Gore joins us tonight with details on today's closing arguments in the case. Asia. Jane Janelle, the defense attorney for Terrence Edwards, told jurors this case is a matter of towing the legal line between escorts and prostitutes. Prosecutors, though, say Edwards crossed that line many times. The defense says Edwards ran a legitimate business that satisfied his client's desire for three C's, communication, connection, and companionship. Prosecutors told jurors to add a fourth C to Edwards' business model, con man. Prosecutors say Edwards coerced and intimidated three women into selling their bodies for his own personal gain. They add Edwards would have done the same to three teenage girls if one of his adult victims hadn't contacted police. The defense told jurors this alleged, the alleged victims in this case should have some accountability, saying they dictated what happened with clients behind closed doors. The jury was sent home for the night and will resume deliberations tomorrow. Jane Janelle. Thanks, Asia. Two men are behind bars tonight for allegedly robbing a Billings casino overnight. 35-year-old Antonio Gutierrez and 30-year-old Christopher Ezre, both of Billings, face robbery charges. Police were called to Dottie's Casino off of Shiloh Road just before midnight. Witnesses told officers that a man entered the casino, pulled out a handgun, and demanded money. The man then fled on foot with an undisclosed amount of cash and jumped into a vehicle waiting outside. Video surveillance helped officers track down the suspect vehicle about an hour later. Officers saw Gutierrez and Esre walking into the Gold Dust Casino on 15th Street West and took them into custody. Authorities have identified the man killed in a head-on crash on Highway 212 near Joliet last night. Carbon County Sheriff says Kent Harris, a 73-year-old from the Red Lodge area, died in that crash. The Montana Highway Patrol says Harris was attempting to pass a snowplow when he collided with another vehicle heading the opposite direction. Harris was driving this red pickup truck. The driver of the black Jeep, 71-year-old Mike Kreider of Billings, survived the crash, only suffering minor bumps and bruises. Now, Kreider told Q2 he was driving back after a day of skiing when through the blowing snow from the snowplow, he saw headlights coming at him. On to the weather scene now. Some serious snow falling across the Magic City at this hour. Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, this is just the beginning. And I'm a little concerned about this tonight because now we're getting into the commute time and the uh, snow conditions are going to start freezing and the streets are going to become very icy out there. We've already had trouble across uh, places like around Harlington tonight in Wheatland County. Now it looks like that weather is improving a little bit. You can see in the Doppler radar, though, the snow continues to fly across much of south central Montana, including the Billings area. Now we still have a winter weather advisory for about a foot of snow up by Glacier National Park, a wind chill advisory up in the northeast corner, 15 to 25 below zero, high winds in the Beartooth foothills and then take a look at this. That's a winter storm watch that covers almost the entire state. Here in the Billings area, we could be looking at five to eight inches of snow with local amounts up to 12 inches. And so here's what our actual forecast model is showing. We're going to get all the way up to about maybe six, seven and a half inches of snow for Billings by the time Saturday gets here. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Another Republican who wants to try to unseat Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester officially entered the race today. Former State District Judge Russell Fagg of Billings paid his filing fee in Helena. Fagg showed up in person at the Capitol and paid $1,740 to appear on the June 5th primary ballot. He's the third Montana Republican to make that leap in the U.S. Senate race this year. As many as five or six candidates may compete in the primary to then challenge Tester. Other candidates include State Auditor Matt Rosendale, who has yet to pay his filing fee, and Big Sky businessman Troy Downing. Now, Fagg spoke with MTN News shortly after he filed today and said he's telling fellow Republicans he's the best bet. I think I'm the most electable in November. Fourth generation Montanan, 22 years as a district court judge, former Republican legislator, endorsements from Governor Roscoe, Governor Martz, Governor Stevens, Congressman Hill, Congressman Reberg. That is the goal of Montana Republicans is to defeat Senator Tester and I think I have the best shot of doing that. Now the deadline for candidate filing is five weeks away. A small plane registered out of Darby, Montana crashed this morning killing two people on board near San Diego. Officials say the single-engine Cessna took off from Santee, California around 7 this morning 
but crashed shortly after takeoff, killing both the pilot and the lone passenger. Witnesses on the ground reported hearing a loud noise just before the plane crashed in an industrial lot near the airport. Two dogs that were also on board survived and were taken to an animal hospital for treatment. Some folks on the ground said they heard some kind of um, engine throttling and the airplane made a turn, it looks like, and came back and was actually traveling eastbound when it uh, lost power and uh, landed here in the yard. As yet, the names of those killed in the crash have not been released. Well, Cloud Peak Energy and KTVQ teaming up to present three local schools with financial grants for their special products projects. And this month, the focus is all on the arts. Q2's Jenny Fick is here tonight to show us more. Huntley Project High School would like to purchase a new microphone system. We do some awesome programs throughout the year for Veterans Day programs, all the way through Christmas programs. Their current system requires cords to be strewn across the floor and results in feedback. Especially for our fine arts programs when they do their play in the spring. You have wires going across the stage and, and those individuals are just looking to focus on their performance. Reliable audio would polish off performers' hard work. Well, all those individuals have put in a ton of time and effort and so anything that can take away from any of the distractions or the inconveniences of putting on a play. And then we do also enhance a lot of our programs um, with some of our special needs students. And so when they come up to sing, we, we want to make sure that it's just a great experience for everybody. This new microphone system will help Huntley to showcase their community events as well as their performing arts programs. Now these next two schools are strictly hoping to help their art programs. Shepherd Middle School would like to purchase some heavy duty easels to make better use of space. Uh, my painting class specifically has 29 in it and 29 bodies in here trying to work with big canvases. They're nudging elbows and getting into each other's work. And we just need something that is more economical for them to freely move and freely create. They would eliminate the large desks and form a circle. And each student would have their own station that they would individually get to work at. They would be at their own space. They get to zone out. They get to really focus. Um, being in middle school, that's their hardest aspect is focusing on it and not being distracted by others around it. So kind of avoiding having somebody right across from you or right next to you. The easels would last years to serve many budding artists. Taking more serious aspect, I have some phenomenal artists that do some great things and they should be having the best materials to work from. Laurel Walker is one of several art teachers that travels throughout School District 2. She would like to purchase mini iPads to assist with learning photography. There's so much more to art. Art is a huge umbrella and there's a lot of things that are underneath it and digital is a big part of it. And so if, if we're gonna teach that in fourth and fifth grade, we need to have those materials. Teaching four different schools, it becomes difficult to ensure that needed supplies will be ready to use. A teacher that comes in for just one day a week, you know, you have to kind of squeak by and see if you can get six iPads. Sometimes devices aren't even plugged in. So, you know, you can lose photos, you can lose work. Walker says that having this type of technology available can open up minds about different types of creativity and passions. You could have a fifth grader that hates art but loves the stop motion process and the flip book animation and that's going to continue on his love for it into middle school and into high school and then you know hopefully into the future and that's what we're here for. Jenny Fick, MTN News, Billings. All right, thanks Jenny. All very deserving Great projects. Project. You can also, by the way, donate to help those schools with their projects in addition to these one school at a time grants. To donate, vote or nominate a school that could benefit, log on to oneschoolatatime.org. Well, up next on tonight's 530 News, as the clock ticks down toward another possible government funding vote, those who rely on community health centers are rallying to save them. And later tonight in sports, Sydney's wrestlers have their eyes on one thing only this weekend. Meet our latest athletes of the week. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.